Hi, my name is Paula Pittman-Brown. I'm an art instructor at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, and I'm also a painter. Um, I've been painting my whole life and exhibiting and selling my work for many, many years. I'm thrilled today to talk to you about our show here of Art in Making Artists. This show is comprised of 18 students of mine from the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. And many of them have been students of mine for eight years. And they have been hardworking, very serious artists, uh, developing their own series of work that's uh, authentic to themselves. The first works that um, we'd like to show you are my own pieces. There are seven pieces that I did in 2018, a smattering of some paintings that I did of my students at work. And I thought that would be a great introduction to the show. Not only is it their work, but me observing them doing their work. Just zooming in on each one. And then when I went back to graduate school, it was for art education. And I have been studying art education at Mass Art. That's awesome. Yeah. And my daughter's an art teacher. She went to the museum really? school. Really? Yeah. And Mass Art. Mass Art's a wonderful school. These pieces of work, uh, these two here are by Barbara Kibler, and she's been painting for quite a while. For years, Barbara worked on tree paintings, and then the last year or so, in Zoom classes, she's been starting to paint the figure and doing a fantastic job with it. The whole Alice Neal kind of piece, which is very dramatic and fun. These two pieces are the work of a Not Jaws fan, and her subject that she loved to pursue was her family. Uh, an architect by trade, you often see architectural bits and pieces in her piece, and the one on the left is an elaborate composite of architecture, and she's got two of her children there in the piece, too. It's kind of a composite of when they were on vacation and things that she brought home as memories. This is the work of Irene Greff. Irene has loved painting people's right from the beginning, and she also looks at her family for inspiration. And they're very intimate pieces of her home life with her husband, her children, her grandchildren, and in the last year she got some cats. So then when you move into the work of Maya Flanagan's, these two pieces, she was very much involved in landscape. And her landscapes, both of them are, one is tulips in the park on Friday, and the other is tulips in the park on Sunday. And as you can see here, she's really exploring shape and expressive color to create this joyous spring landscape. These two paintings are by Andrew Friedland. I chose two pieces from each person to show the consistency between their work. One piece isolated, you wouldn't be able to see that the style, technique, the point of view. And Andrew loves paint. He just puts paint down thick and bright and with palette knife, and that's something you see in his work. This is Laura Chazane's work. And if you can see, she's yet another landscape artist. So I'm clumping the show together thematically and coloristically. And in, she has recently discovered if she paints the canvas an intense color, then does the painting on top. Some of that fluorescent pink is popping through and creating a shimmering, yummy edge to the color. And even with the little one over here, she calls it Sherbert Fields. So she's thinking about color creating the mood. The beautiful thing about teaching art, the great joy of it, everybody's different and everybody looks at the world different and everybody handles how they do their work differently and it, it never gets tiresome for me. I'm inspired all the time by their work. When you look at Melissa's work here, it's, it's much more subtle in color, a very sensitive look at the world. These two pieces are related to childhood memories. Her grandparents had a farm out in Harvard, Mass, and this is their house on the left with a buttonwood tree in the foreground. Melissa carefully organized this composition, partially from references, partially from memory, but I really love how you're up on a hill looking down to the house and get a sense of the land beyond behind the trees. It's a real nice sensitive painting. On the same property, when she was a little girl, she remembers swinging, and that's a self-portrait. When she was a little girl, when she'd swing, she would swing and be able to see all the fields beyond. Uh, what a challenge to paint. 
to be able to depict each layer of those fields. I really like how she put the cows in the foreground too. Wrapped around the corner, this was really fun uh, connection, same size even. This is the work of Ginny Galota. And if you see, it's another swing piece and a different look at the swing. Ginny has many, many grandchildren and they're very much a big part of her life. And in the Zoom class that we have where we did figure painting, she was always painting her grandchildren. And this is one of her granddaughters on Castle Island. And I love how she painted the joy on the little girl's face. And what we were talking about in class was foreshortening and she did such a great job with those giant flip-flops overlapping to the girl to the space. Really sweet. The other one, Ginny is a, a somewhat humorous person too, and I think the humor comes through in her work. And this is one of her grandchildren collapsed on a chair after eating a bunch of bananas. And they're like humorous autobiog autobiographical commentary of her life. These two incredible portraits are by Nick Voya Joppolis. And I have to tell you, the one on the bottom, he did a portrait of me. That is me with one of my paintings in the background, and he calls it the teach. <laughs> um, the one on the top, he calls Wrinkled Story, and he just really enjoys doing portraits of people. And what you see in Nick's work is that intensity of building up the surface of the wrinkles and the muscle and the bone. And he's, he, as an artist, he closely observes what he's painting. They're really quite something. This gal, um, Michaela Nielsen, has three paintings here. She is um, a little different in the way that she is an environmentalist. And she really protests about plastic and the environment. So each one of her artworks is a strong social statement. And I'm actually with her in another group called the I3C Artists. It's an environmental art group where we're trying to promote a safer planet, less pollution and all that through art. And if you look at her green herons here in a matching pair, beautifully painted on this fluorescent acidy background with both of these birds have found something that doesn't belong with them. People should definitely come to this show because I think it's very inspiring to see people. Most of the people here have had an interest in art their whole life. But most of these people are semi-retired or close to retirement, and they always wanted to paint, and they are doing it, and they are successful at it, and they're happy about it, and they have a lot to share.